are you coming up to see me? Are you coming up to see me? Hello, bat baby. Hello, 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 sweetheart. How is you today? Gosh, I wish you'd look at that camera. I really wish you would. I wish you'd look at the camera for me. Can we just... Nope. <laughs> she was prepared to bolt right there. Right? You sniffy mummy's hat? <laughs> Thank you, bat baby. Thank you, my love. Thank you. See how she doesn't lick my face? Because I don't like it. And so right from a little baby, I would be like, do not lick my face. Mm-hmm. Because I don't like it. <laughs> Thank you, Bat. Welcome to the 31 days of King Juggernaut. My name is Karen Stever. And for the last month, I've been on a, a journey with you guys. Talking to you every day about this book. The chapters from the book. The characters from the book. And uh, it's it's been good to do. It's been good to go back and read some excerpts because I've been in I've been writing mode for a long time. I've been in editing mode for a long time and formatting mode for a long time. And uh, now I'm I'm reading. I'm just reading. <laughs> it's really difficult for me to read this book without just looking for mistakes or something still like it's just it's hard to enjoy a story that's why I'm so glad there's other authors out there that write that I could read their work it's it is hard to uh objectively look at things that you've written and so it's been kind of fun to just talk to you guys every day about a character from the book and tomorrow I will have a Facebook live where um it's just I, I consider it just a celebration of the journey and I think you guys know more about my journey than anybody else in my life. I would not have a, I'm not doing a, a book launch party where, you know, you go to some store or a library or something with strangers who have no clue who you are. Um, even just for me to invite people around me, like my Facebook friends know me more. <laughs> it's just, you guys do. So I wanted to do it on Facebook Live. The only caveat is that I have really bad internet because I live out in the middle of nowhere. So I'm hoping my internet will be okay. If it's not, I'll just, I'll do a video and upload it. But uh, I plan on trying to jump on camera with you guys for Halloween, okay? So I hope you'll join me. So every day I'm talking about a puzzle piece. And today's puzzle piece has some wings on it because those wings are on the back of a spider named Fly. <laughs> it's kind of confusing. It's like naming your dog cat or something. Uh, this spider's name is Fly. This is Mita's spider. Mita is the nonverbal savant that is the main character in book number seven, which takes place in, in, in India. <laughs> Think about it for a second, not Italy. India. So there's a whole bunch of, there's Berlin and Japan and Italy and um, Brazil and Egypt and, New, and Ian, this book is in New York and Mita will end the whole book series in India and Mita's spider is introduced in this book. So each child has a spider and Mita's spider is a nice blindy, black shiny, <laughs> is a black shiny, um, spider with white wings on it and it's named fly so yeah she's also the girl that ian meets in the great kingdom of jagannatha in this book and she has the opposite superpower of ian so ian has a retrocognitive ability which means he's able to see the history of any animal and often people he comes across with Mita, it's the opposite. She has precognitive ability, which means she can see into the future. And uh, the book seven takes place in October of 1940. This book, King Juggernaut New York, it takes place in October of 1939. So it's 
Ian's story is in October 39, the next one is December of 39, then it's February of 1940, then it's April of 1940, then it's June of 1940, then it's August of 1940, and then it's October of 1940 is how the whole thing ends. So that's when, uh, and it's all during World War II, right? So this, the very end of the book series will take place when uh, the Indian Air Force pilots arrive in Britain. So you'll see how the history of the war will tie in to all of this. So tomorrow is Halloween, and I'm excited to uh, to share the very last puzzle piece with you and and just celebrate. So I'm going to read about fly now. I told you I'm not going to read anything more at the end of the book. Like the last couple of days, I didn't read. Um, I didn't read. The Great Stone Dogs, anything from that, and I didn't, which is chapter 19, and the very last chapter, what was in the donkey's wagon, I didn't read anything from that because um, that's the end of the book, and I just, I don't want to read anything from that. That's really a spoiler. <laughs> so what I will read from is Spiders Love Sugar Cubes. This is where I start to introduce some of the spiders that belong to some of the other children in some of the other books. <laughs> so in Spiders Love Sugar Cubes, Ian is in his room at Jackal House, which is a children's asylum, a children's hospital. Uh, it's hard to even call it a children's hospital. It's so dilapidated and old and um, there's condensation running down the walls and it's very cold in there. And of course it's October. So it's just that really cold that goes right through you in, um, uh, in upstate New York. So Ian's in his room, which has bars on the windows and is locked in and he doesn't even have sheets on his bed. It's a mattress in there with a really old ceiling fan that's broken and kind of makes a horrible sound in its rotation. But Ian has no friends there, but he's made friends with some spiders that are in his room. So the spiders just finished up a big job in his room. Ian looked up to see the horsefly buzzing around all around the fan. This land unit needed to catch a flying target and it didn't appear to be coming down. It was at that moment fly appeared on the ceiling fan. There didn't seem to be a point of such a magnificent tapestry if fly was going to catch the fly herself. She moved to the center of the ceiling fan directly above Hunt. Everyone was perfectly still and even Ian stopped breathing as fly dropped straight down on her silk like a courageous trapeze artist. As she hit the web, Hunt was a perfect gentleman and moved to one side for her. It's one of the other spiders I talked about, right? If there were any crowns hanging around the room, it would have been appropriate to mount them on their wee heads because they were Prince Hunt and Princess Fly at that moment. And they all waited. Nobody knows why the fly above was insisting on this dizzying dance at the fan. It seemed to be arrogantly claiming the space as if it was untouchable. However... Like any conceited, self-appointed ruler, its reign would soon have to end. It was no match for six disciplined arachnids with empty bellies and a penchant for mathematical art forms. Or penchant. Penchant. <laughs> fly knew one thing. The fly was inconsistent. Unlike the spiders meticulously planning, the fly was either chaotically celebrating its independence or had gone completely mad from being in the same room for so long. Either theory drew the same conclusion. It was going to eventually slam into Fly's silk. So this is Ian in his room. Like, he's got some friends, <laughs> finally. Ian's going to get out of this room with the help of those spiders. You may remember that in the Blackguard video. Where he kicks the jar and it smashes and the spiders go out and the adventure begins. I didn't even have spiders in this book originally. I had, um, well, I had him with some spiders, but I didn't have the spiders quite assigned this way to children or those spiders being responsible for the children's superpower. It wasn't until a few years ago that I found out through an MRI that I had an arachnoid cyst growing in the back of my head. And it is inoperable. It sits in the middle of my brain. It's probably this big. 
<laughs> it's, it's like an egg back there. And after coming to some sort of acceptance that this was something I was going to be living with, I, in my imagination, not science, of course, like everything I say, it's all imagination. So, imagination sometimes works better than science, right? <laughs> I like to think that it is my muse, it is the reason why I'm a little different. And so at a certain point in the series, I decided to take the spider that was in my head and give it to all the children to guide them through their adventures. And so in King Juggernaut, New York City, Ian has it in his compass and it takes him everywhere. So yeah, it wasn't originally in there, but now spiders are, are my driving force. They are patient, they're smart. They don't get upset. They're cool, calm, collected. And they're methodical. And they have a purpose. A great purpose. If you, any of you who own a garden know a spider has a great purpose. So I hope you'll, it'll cause you to look a little bit differently at them. And I hope that you will get yourself back to the playground through reading this series. I'm really proud of it. I'm really excited to share it with you. And tomorrow, I'm going to celebrate it on Halloween. Hope you'll join me for Facebook Live as long as my internet behaves properly. And I'll talk to you then, okay? Have a great day. Have a great night wherever you are. And I'll see you on Halloween. Rock on.